Our giving must be motivated by more than a general appeal to humanitarianism. Our giving must be rooted theologically and missionally. Here are some of the components for giving in the Wesleyan tradition. One, giving is rooted in the very nature and being of God. The ability to give itself is a gift from God. All life is grace, a free, unearned gift from a giving God who invites us to share in the divine life and mission of giving. Two, giving is indispensable to Christian discipleship. Giving for Wesley is a part of holy living. Collections for the poor were an important part of early Methodist societies, class meetings, and love feasts. The focus was on more than almsgiving. Class meetings became communities of grace in which people were held accountable for mutual support and for basic Christian discipleship, including the use of their resources. Growth in discipleship inevitably involves growth in giving. Three, giving includes more than the products of our labor. Our labor itself is a form of giving, a means of earning all we can by contributing to the health and healing of creation. Disciplined living in response to the needs of the world, especially the poor, is a form of giving. We give by refusing to take from others what is necessary for their abundant life. Simplifying our living and preserving the earth's resources are forms of giving in the Wesleyan tradition. Four, giving in the Wesleyan tradition involves friendship with the poor. Wesley considered regular visitation of the poor as indispensable to Christian discipleship. He admonished the Methodists to deliver their aid to the poor instead of sending it. Proximity with the poor changes our priorities. The poor people of England shaped and formed Wesley, and they can shape and form us. It is a profoundly theological issue. God has chosen the poor as special means of grace. Renewal will not come to United Methodism or any other church apart from welcoming the poor into the center of the church's life. Five, giving in the Wesleyan tradition involves more than individual charity. It moves to building communities of interconnectedness, justice, and compassion. Charity itself can be a paternalistic means of control. Justice, however, is what God requires. Wesley made no distinction between delivering medical care and proclaiming the gospel. He spoke out against child labor, the inhumane treatment of prisoners, and the ultimate form of exploitation, the slave trade. His outspoken resistance to alcohol traffic and excessive interest charged to the poor were expressions of his stewardship. Giving in the Wesleyan tradition includes giving of our voices on behalf of the voiceless. Giving for Wesley was no pious rhetoric designed to increase contributions to the local church. Rather, giving is a means of expressing generosity rooted in gratitude for God's generosity and a means of fulfilling the great commandment to love God and our neighbor. Wesley was convinced that if the Methodist would give all they can, then all would have enough. Perhaps Wesley's own words are a fitting conclusion. Money is an excellent gift of God, answering the noblest ends. In the hands of his children, it is food for the hungry, drink for the thirsty, raiment for the naked. It gives to the traveler and the stranger where to lay his head. By it, we may supply the place of a husband to the widow and of a father for the fatherless. We may be a defense for the oppressed, a means of health to the sick, of ease to them 
that are in pain. It may be as eyes to the blind, as feet to the lame, yea, a lifter up from the gates of death. May the heirs of John Wesley learn that there is no gospel without giving. And may the people called Methodist discover the power of the gospel by a renewal of giving in the Wesleyan tradition.